What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and to another Overwatch League discussion video. Today is going to be special as I'm doing something that has been highly requested ever since my channel started to blow up. Today, I will be going over my best player for every hero in the 2019 Overwatch League season. I can't even begin to tell you how many comments I've seen on YouTube, Discord, and Twitter where people have asked me to do this. I kid you not when I say people have been asking me to do this since February. And sadly, I had to keep telling people to wait back then since GOATS was the main comp being played for a long time, but thanks to the roll lock, this video finally became something I could actually make. But before we begin, there's a few points I wanted to bring up and just give you some clarification on. Point number one is that this list is strictly my opinion. I am in no way trying to say that everything that comes out of my mouth is a fact, so with that said, it's okay if you disagree with some of my selections, but please remember to be respectful if there is anything you disagree with. Point number two is that there is going to be some guesswork involved with specific heroes as some of them still weren't played all that much even even after the roll lock was introduced. Point number three is that only people who played these heroes during the season will be up for consideration. People who retired mid-season will count as well. Point number four is that I probably will be explaining my thought process for many of the decisions I made just so you guys can understand why I picked some of the people I did. And finally, I will be mentioning a lot of stats along with the gameplay itself, and the reference that I will be using for the stats is a website called Omnic Meta. The stats on this website are per one minute, but I will be multiplying any numbers used so the stats are per 10 minutes instead of per one minute. And those are basically all of the points and rules I wanted to bring up in the intro, so without wasting any more time, let's begin with the tanks. I think I'll go in alpha alphabetical order, which means that first up is D.Va, and like with Season 1, we saw this hero get played on stage for a good chunk of the season, so we have a more than satisfactory sample size to look at here. And when it comes down to the best D.Va player in the league, I tend to think of guys like Choyobin, Janu, Dako, or maybe even Space. But there can only be one best player, and by process of elimination, I think it really comes down to either Choi or Janu. They were, in my opinion, without a doubt the two best divas for basically the whole year. As clutch and consistent as both of them were though, I think Janu has the edge. No disrespect to Choi, but I think Janu managed to have a greater impact on Diva. While some saw Choi Yobin as this underappreciated carry of the shock early on in the season, Janu was noticeably putting in the work from the moment he played his first game or two. No matter what challenge came his way, he was a dominant force. The stats don't lie. His death rate was amongst one of the lowest in the league, even though he was playing alongside such an aggressive team. He was the only D.Va player other than Void to have less than 3 deaths per 10 minutes, and I personally saw Janu as this super crazy workhorse on D.Va. He got clutch bombs and contributed on a majority of kills, while also helping to keep Bumper and his supports alive. Janu was everywhere. There are very few D.Va players in the world that can play at this kind of level, and for that reason, he is the best D.Va player on my list. Up next is Orisa. Now this was one of the harder picks for me to make on this list. Although Orisa was played in both Stage 4 and in the playoffs, it was quite difficult for me to come up with a conclusive answer for who's the best. After looking back at some gameplay though, I narrowed down my choices to Smurf, Pokepo, Jester, TZ, and Janus. These were the 5 guys that I thought showed off a top tier Orisa in the Overwatch League this year. All of them played crucial roles on this hero during any sort of late season success found by their teams. The big thing I took away that separates them from the rest of the pack other than team success was just how good they were with executing their pulls as well as shield management and supercharger placement. Looking at the Holt, I personally felt like they were the ones executing the most combos with their teammates using this ability. It didn't matter whether it was used for a Dragon Strike, Meteor Strike, or even just a Roadhog Hook. Their Holts usually found a ton of value which led to many assisted kills. Shield management and uptime is a bit more self-explanatory I feel, but I'd still say that these were the five guys who did it the best. But then there's the supercharger usage. In my opinion, how well you use this ult on this hero is what tends to separate the great players from the good ones. Supercharger is such a powerful ability, so being conscious of where you place it goes a long way. These are the players that I believe do the best with placing it around corners and just doing a good job of protecting it in general. Picking the best player on Orisa is something that is very difficult to judge. And in the end, I felt I couldn't just pick one player out of this group, so I decided to go with a tie between Smurf and Pokepo. No matter how much I thought about it, I just couldn't decide between the two of them. Out of everybody I mentioned previously, plus just how they look from the general eye test, it makes me believe that both Pokepo and Smurf more than deserve to be considered the best Orisa player in the Overwatch League during 2019. Now it's Reinhardt time. 
and the main choices for this are pretty obvious. When it comes down to the best Rhine, the three names that always come to mind for me at least are Super, Bumper, and Mono. In my opinion, they were by far the most consistent Rhine players in the league. Along with that, each of them had a different strength that made them so dangerous. Super was incredibly clutch and had high value earth shatters, Bumper's aggression made tons of space for the rest of his team, and Mono's balanced playstyle provided his team with some needed stability. But as good as Mono and Bumper were though, the obvious choice for me is Super in the end. After some early season struggles, Super was probably the most dominant Reinhardt in the Overwatch League. Early to mid season 1 you could probably argue that Bumper or Mono was better, but I honestly felt like Super surpassed the likes of both of them the moment he had that breakout game in the Stage 1 Finals where he clearly won the main tank battle against Bumper. Super never looked back after this match. Throughout all of Stage 2 and for most of Stage 3, Super was the best Reinhardt statistically by a good margin. When you're pretty much like number 1 or at least top 3 bare minimum in every single major statistical Reinhardt category, it's hard to pick somebody else over you. The big indicators that show just how impactful his Ryan were are him being number one among all main tanks damage wise on the hero as well as him having one of the lower death rates. Now obviously, his team did a great job of supporting him, but I feel like you can say that for most good tank players in the league. You can't just not have a brain and play however you want and expect to find success in the Overwatch League. Super played smart and he deserves credit. Moving on to Roadhog, I would say the choice for this one is actually quite easy. Choyobin is the guy you have to pick here. Whenever I look back at the film, the person who always stands out more than the others on this hero is Choi. Whenever he played Hog, he carried. Simple as that. I don't know how else to explain it. Anytime I witnessed Choi play Hog, he did something to impress me. Anyone else remember the Stage 3 Finals when the Shock were down 3-0 but then nearly pulled off the reverse sweep? Well, if you ask me, the biggest reason why they were even able to climb back into that match to begin with was because of the effort made by Choyobin when he was playing Hog. There's countless times in other games where you can catch him having the same type of impact, and one other thing that was so great about his Hog was how he had little to no drop off in performance regardless of who the main tank was on the team. He found the same success while playing with two very different main tanks who have very different playstyles. I find that to be very impressive. It's hard enough to master the synergy and timing with one main tank partner, so seeing him do this with two goes to show you just how skilled Choyobin truly was on Roadhog. Next up on the list is Sigma, and Sigma is probably the most difficult hero on here to judge since we only got the opportunity to see Overwatch League players use him for a very short window of time. And it's tough too because it seemed like there were a lot of good Sigma players in the league who got eliminated early on in the playoffs, but you can't exactly call someone the number one Sigma if they only participated in like one playoff match. But from my personal experience watching, it seemed like the top Sigma players in the league were Mekko, Choyobin, Janu, and maybe like Rhea or Hoppa. I feel like it's not fair to definitively say there was a best Sigma player in the league due to a small sample size of games and 8 teams not being able to show what they're capable of using that hero, but for the sake of the video, I'll make a decision anyway. My best Sigma for 2019 is Choyobin. This probably seems like an easy way out, but I see it like this. This is just who is the best in my opinion. After Choi struggled against Gator in that loss to the rain, Choyobin did nothing but get stronger and stronger on that hero with every single passing match he played, and he ended up going on to win finals MVP because of how he was performing on that hero. Again, with how little Sigma we ended up seeing, this one is kind of up in the air, but Choi seems like the most suitable person to call the best if you ask me. And now things start to get a bit easier again as we transition over to Winston. I'm going to just straight up tell you guys that I think it's Gushue. I mean, do I even need to explain myself with this one? Winston was a pretty map specific character during the GOATS meta it felt like, and he kind of tended to be played on the maps that have access to a lot of high ground or on specific points. Reinhardt was the more common hero during GOATS, but regardless, nobody else was as dominant on Winston as Gushue. I just don't think you could really consider anybody else. Gushue was at the top in terms of Winston stats, his primal rage mechanics were second to none, and he generated so much space for the rest of his team. With his Winston being so dangerous, it demanded a lot of attention from enemy teams. I've seen teams devote tons of resources just to slow him down. I'm pretty sure there was a game against the Valiant where they solo EMP'd the guy. If you're getting that type of attention on Winston, then I think it's fair to say you're probably the best on him. Moving on to Wrecking Ball, I think I have to go with the Yada Chat himself, Amo. Honorable mention goes out to Gamsu and Ryo because I think the two of them were also excellent ball players, but Among is the clear cut winner for me. He found value on this hero no matter what the meta was, and I think that's what separates him from the rest of the pack. It doesn't really matter whether it was on full goats, somber goats, or in 2 2 2 Rolock. He always had those games where he was crazy disruptive. Not to mention that he probably had the best usages of Minefield out of any other ball player in the league. And last, but certainly not least, we have Zarya. And to me, there's really only two realistic choices. It has to be either Sinatra or Salmon Su. All you have to do is look at the stats. When Goats was exclusively played, they were the top two Zaryas by far. 
They were the top two in damage, eliminations, and deaths per 10 minutes. Their bubble management was also way better than everybody else's, it felt like. These were the two that were always neck and neck on Zarya, but as the season progressed, I personally thought that Sinatra was able to gain the upper hand and just enough separation for me to eventually consider him to be the best Zarya in the league. At the peak of GOATS in Stage 2, Sinatra was somehow outputting about 1,000 more damage per 10 minutes than Salman Su. He was even charging Graviton Surge the fastest out of any player in the league, and that's massive when you think about how powerful that ability can be. His contribution seemed to be slightly greater than Salman Su's, and the guy did win MVP because of his level of domination he was showcasing on this hero. Whenever I watch Sinatra play, he just does more to impress me for some reason. Since Stage 2, he has been my best Zarya player in the league. Okay, the tanks are done now. Now it's time for DPS. With alphabetical order in mind, first up is Ash. And would you look at that, this is yet another hero we barely saw at all. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but there was only a handful of teams who even bothered touching this hero. The players I can distinctly remember using Ash are Yang Zhao Long, Baby Bay, Dia, Fleda, and I think maybe Bacon Jack and Time who played her as well. There's probably a few names I'm missing, so make sure to let me know about that down in the comment section. But anyway, none of the guys I just mentioned played her very much. It was a very rare occurrence to see Ash in the Overwatch League. It's pretty hard to say who's the best at a hero when pretty much nobody uses her at all. But looking back at the rare occurrences where she was played, the person who stands out the most for me is Baby. Bay, so I think I'll go with him for best dash. During stage 4 and the playoffs, he broke her out on point B of Hanamura sometimes, and he actually found some success with her. This was one of the few occasions I actually can remember Ash being of use in the Overwatch League. Because of this factor and the lack of players who used her to begin with, I think Baby Bay is probably my best option here. Next up is Bastion. He's in a pretty similar boat to Sigma, and not every team was all that interested in using the Bastion comp, so that only limits the possible options even more. But from what I watched, it seemed like Architect and Sabiobi were the two players who found the most success using him. It's hard to impress all that much on a hero like Bastion, though. There's very few things that you can do with that hero which can separate you from the majority, I feel. Because of this, SBB and Architect were selected for some very specific reasons reasons that don't necessarily have to do with skill alone. I mentioned success before, but they were also pretty consistent. I suppose that kind of has to do with skill, but still. I really don't want to spend all that much time discussing Bastion since there isn't much else to say, so I'll just say that Architect is the best Bastion player in the league. He kind of shredded the competition during the playoffs, and even styled on the Titans during the Grand Finals when he rocket jumped onto the chandelier of Eichenwald Point C. Sorry if the reasoning behind this pick isn't all that sound, but there really isn't much to go off of here when judging Bastion. Now we get into one of the harder ones. Next up is Doomfist. During the short time we saw Doom get played, there was a good handful of players in the league who showed off some insane skill on him. Apologies if I miss anyone you think deserves to be mentioned here, but I have a long list of Doomfist players who I wanted to just give some recognition to. The best Doom players in my opinion were Sinatra, Hoxel, Erster, Libero, Bozzy, Hydration, Eileen, and Youngjin. Actually, Fitz was pretty good too. Anyway though, all of them had their frag out moments while also showing a solid understanding of how to manage cooldowns as tools to engage and disengage. Not to mention that they all seem to be on the same page with their main tanks when it came to connecting with combos. But since we're not talking about my best Orisa player, there can only be one who gets chosen. It's not an easy decision to make since I'm working with a lot of good options, but in the end, I decided on Sinatra as my best Doomfist player from the 2019 season. Overall, I thought he fragged out a bit more than the rest of the honorable mentions I brought up earlier. I do think, however, his cooldown usage wasn't quite as clean as a few of the other players in the league, but he made up for it with how well his team seemed to play around him. I don't know if it was just me who noticed this, but it seemed like the Shock felt very comfortable playing around Sinatra during the playoffs. He was always reliable no matter what the situation was, and that is ultimately why I selected him as my number one Doomfist. Now it's time for Genji. How many teams even bothered to use him? Like seriously, outside of Hoxel, Decay, Jinmu, and Erster, who actually did something memorable on Genji? Sinatra did something like once or twice too I suppose, but I can't really think of anybody else for the most part. Out of everybody I saw play though, Hoxel's Genji those few times on Temple of Anubis in particular was the most impressive, so I'll go with him as my best Genji in the league. He kind of has a similar effect to my Baby Bay Ash pick, where he had a great impact on a certain map using a specific hero. Also, I mean, come on, he's one of the most mechanically gifted Genji players to ever touch the game. It's hard to go against something like that. Next, we have Hanzo, and there were some damn good Hanzo players this year. I have to give some honorable mentions out to Jinmu, Architect, KSF, Surefor, Prophet, and Bird Ring. They were all cracked Hanzo players, but none of them make the final cut. In my opinion, the top two Hanzos in the league were Cory and Erster. 
If you look at the Stage 4 statistics, they were the two best by a landslide. It was usually one of them you'd find for every single Hanzo category out there. But since I would prefer to only pick one of them, I'm going to say the best Hanzo in this year's season was Cory. Although Erster was just as good when you look at the stats from Stage 4, Cory looked better from the perspective of the eye test. And I mean, come on, Cory had one of the greatest games in league history using Hanzo. On Hollywood against the Titans, Cory posted the second highest amount of final blows ever on a map with 34. When you have one of the single greatest individual performances ever using a specific hero, it becomes really hard not to consider you one of the best, if not the best. But it goes just beyond that one game. Corey was going uncontested in the Hanzo mirror match in nearly every game he was a part of in Stage 4. Moving on to Junkrat, part of me just wants to go with Jake for the memes, but that wouldn't really be fair since I can only recall him playing Junkrat like one time. Instead, I'll shift my focus over to Erster and Architect. I always regarded them as two of the better Junk players this year, and the stats back it up as both of them average well over 10,000 damage per 10 minutes. I can vividly remember both of them dominating on point A defense of Anubis in particular. Erster, I remember, was just crushing the hopes and dreams of the NYXL, while Architect put the team on his back. Erster has significantly more playtime and a larger sample size to analyze, but Architect has far more damage per 10 minutes. It's actually kind of insane. I'd say the two of them are pretty interchangeable for this award, but I'm just going to say the best Junkrat is Architect since his damage stat is way better, but now we have to move on to McCree. I hope you guys are starting to feel my pain now with all these heroes who never really got used, but in all seriousness, there were some pretty good McCree players this season, even though there weren't all that many. Three of the best, in my opinion, were Logix, Lynxer, and Happy. But honestly, if you look at the stats and some of the highlights, the choice becomes pretty easy. The best McCree of Season 2 has to be Logix. In the 36 minutes of playtime he had on the hero, Logix ranked number one in both damage and final blows per 10 minutes. The only other player with at least 10k damage per 10 minutes was Shax, and yet Logic still outdamages him by over 1,000. His McCree in my eyes was without a doubt the most dominant, and I feel that both the stats and the gameplay helped back this up. Logic's owned Lijian Control Center. No enemy DPS could keep pace with him here. When he played McCree on this map, he would get into the zone, and absolutely nobody could take him out of it. It reminds me heavily of when Pine used to roll the competition on Ilios. Logix has a very similar effect on Lijian Control Center. Now it's time for May, and at first I thought picking a winner for this hero would be tricky since guys like Hoxel, Stratus, Rascal, and Erster were also good on her, and just looking at the gameplay wasn't enough for me to decide. So then I took a look at the stats, and the moment I did, there was a very clear winner, and I mean, it was painfully obvious. Rascal is by far the best May in the league, and it really isn't all that close. In the 230 minutes of May he played, he averaged 20.7 eliminations, 8,290 damage, and 7.7 .7 final blows per 10 minutes, all of which are number one in the league by a substantial amount, by the way. To put it more into perspective, the second highest in the league damage-wise was BQB, who was over 2,000 damage short of what Rascal was doing. Not a single person even comes close to matching what Rascal was doing with May. You really have to give him credit for being so good on so many different heroes. The man is truly a freak of nature. Now it's Farah time, and I feel my pick here will be pretty obvious. I have to go with Ding. His Pharaoh was otherworldly. We all saw what he did on Shanghai during the Stage 3 playoffs. I don't think I need to remind anybody of what he was doing back then. Although, before I continue on my Ding celebration and just how good he is, I want to give a quick honorable mention out to Jinmu, Fleta, and Nero, who were all pretty good Pharaohs in their own right. But, it's hard to go with any of them over Ding. Like, yeah... Jinmu for an example is slightly better damage wise, but Ding's impact felt like it was greater. Not to mention that he has nearly twice as much playtime on Pharah than Jinmu does, and yet Ding's stats are basically identical. You'd think he'd be far behind Jinmu since Ding had far more opportunities to be ineffective on Pharah during a match, but he stayed consistent through it all. And besides that dominating performance in the stage playoffs, I think I should also remind you all that Ding did win the Pharah duel against Jinmu during their stage 2 matchup. Because of all of this though, Ding is without a doubt my number one Pharah in the league. Next is Reaper. Once Stage 4 came around, he became quite the common pick for DPS players. He was practically a staple of the meta from that point onward. Some of the best Reapers are, but aren't limited to, Sabiobi, Salmon Su, Striker, Surefor, and Saya Player. A lot of people whose names start with the letter S for some reason are on here, huh? But with all jokes aside, these five actually had some truly special performances on Reaper this season. Sabiobi, Salmon Su, Striker, and Saya Player played the hero a bit more aggressively, while Surefor tended to play a bit more alongside his team. But since I have to limit my choices for this video, I think my top two Reaper players are Striker and Salmon Su. 
as good as the other three were, their consistency can't quite compare to these guys. There were specific moments throughout the playoffs in Stage 4 where they seemed to disappear at times. I think it's a bit more evident what sure for than it is with somebody like Sabiobi, but Sabiobi has a different flaw. From what I observed, he had some questionable Death Blossom uses that found little to no value, and this was kind of a meta where Death Blossom wasn't completely useless, so that's not very good, obviously. Striker and Solomon Sue had better consistency and smarter ult usage. They were major playmakers for their teams, and that's pretty evident by how far each of these teams got in the playoffs. Plenty of pop-off moments from the two of them, and I think they complemented their DPS partners nicely. If there was ever a moment where Sinatra or Hoxel faltered, these guys would always be ready to pick up the slack if the team was in a pinch. And even when the Doomfist players weren't struggling, there were still plenty of moments where they would be the ones to take initiative with a well-timed Death Blossom or Flank. For me, these two are pretty neck and neck for best Reaper in the league, but Striker stands out a bit more for me, and I think one reason is because Architect himself was a really good Reaper in Stage 4, but then Striker kind of just comes in during the playoffs and carries even harder than he did. Summon Sue, I suppose, kind of did a similar thing, where he kind of came in over who Regan stitched during the playoffs, but I feel that Striker's impact was just a bit greater, so I'm going to pick him. As we move on to Soldier 76, the choice becomes fairly difficult. Soldier was such a niche hero in Season 2, and the amount of playtime for every player who used him varied a lot. We have people who played him for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and then there's Happy who used Soldier for a league high 40 minutes. Some of the top tier Soldier players who fall into one of these categories are Saya Player, Happy, AKM, Lynxer, Nene, and Stitch. Every person I just listed off has at least 10,000 damage or more per 10 minutes. Every single one of these guys has prolific game with Soldier and are capable of pumping out really good damage even if Soldier wasn't all that useful this season. But out of all of them, I think I have to go with Lynxer as my best Soldier in the league. His damage output might be less than everybody else I listed off except for Happy, but what makes Lynxer so much better in my opinion was the fact that he was really good with his kill participation. He led all Soldiers in the league in both eliminations and final blows per 10 minutes. While his poke damage on enemies isn't quite number one, he knew better than anybody else how to contribute in the kill feed, and I think that's what matters the most at the end of the day. Plus, I can still vividly remember when he destroyed the Vancouver Titans on Busan. This was probably one of the most dominant performances I've seen on Soldier in a long time. Now we have to talk about Sombra though. Sombra found herself being one of the only DPS heroes in the game who was consistently used throughout the lifetime of GOATS, and as this year's Overwatch League season progressed, we began to see more and more of her. Teams like the Dragons, Valiant, Outlaws, and NYXL even fully committed to having a Sombra in the game over a D.Va, and the results speak for themselves. All four of these teams ended up qualifying for the Stage 3 playoffs. Sombra Goats was extremely powerful. Honorable mentions go out to Sinatra, Stitch, Michelle, and Ding, as I think all of them were incredible players. But I would be a fool to pick any of them over Dante. The guy was probably the number one Sombra in 2018, and in my opinion this year is no different, even though the competition was much greater. I think that statistically there probably are a few Sombras in the league who are better, but the stats don't really tell the whole story with Dante. There are very few players in the world who can put their team on their back the way Dante did with the Outlaws. His inspiring performances on Sombro gave the Outlaws new life after the season appeared to be all but over after Stage 2. After committing to Dante as the full-time starter over Cool Matt and Spree, the Outlaws looked like a brand new team. While some Sombra players have the better stats, none of them can match Dante's impact. I don't think there's a chance the Outlaws make the Stage 3 playoffs without Dante. I highly doubt they pull off that upset against the San Francisco Shock either. Dante Sombra enabled his team big time. Whether it was through a well-timed EMP or just pressuring the enemy backline, Dante did it all for the Houston Outlaws this year, which is exactly why I feel he is the one and only player worthy enough to get the best Sombra award. Next up is Symmetra. If you thought that some of the other heroes play time-wise are bad, then wait until I tell you the stats for Sim. So, in the regular season, Elsa led the league in Symmetra playtime with 16 minutes. That's right, 16 minutes, that's it. Most teams only really utilized her for teleporting out of spawn or to get to a specific vantage point on a map. Out of the few players I can choose from though, I think the number one Symmetra players in the league are probably Baby Bay and Cory. but neither of them even played 10 minutes on this hero so the sample size we are working with here is really small. There were a few occasions where I remember seeing both of them pop off on Li Zhang Night Market though. Each of them did something better than the other in the stat department. Cory has the better damage and final blow stats, but Baby Bay gets more eliminations and more ultimates. Symmetra ult is pretty useful, but Baby Bay tends to die more on Sims, so I think I'm just going to pick Cory here and move on. It's really hard to decide with this one since nobody really played Sim, so we'll just leave it at that. 
Going from one niche hero to the next, it's time for Torbjörn. I won't lie, there's only like 11 players in the league who played Tor for like at least 3 minutes. Watching someone break out the Swedish Dwarf was a very rare occurrence. Unless your name is Dufrin, Elsa, or Mangachu that is. I'm pretty sure these were the only players in the league who played Tor for more than 10 minutes. Earlier I said I wasn't going to embrace the meme with Jake, but for Torp I'm going to give in to temptation and I'm going to pick Dufran. It felt like Torb was actually useful when Dufran broke him out on Ilios well. It wasn't just a meme during that first time we saw against Florida. It was a legit strategy that Atlanta would run on that section of the map. That's how confident this team was in Dufran's Torbjörn. They were willing to have Dufran play Torb over Zarya during the GOATS meta, and the Torb comp actually found success against the likes of the Mayhem and Fusion. And may I remind you that at the time in their game against Philly, it was a playoff match. And to add insult to injury, they beat the Fusion on Ilios well during this playoff game 100% to zero. I mean, how could I not pick Defran here? With all memes aside, he was actually a really good Torb. Next up is Tracer, and out of the decently large list of players I can choose from, I have to say that Striker, Munchkin, Sinatra, and Erster are my standout performers. Each were able to shine at different sections of the season, proving that if the situation is right, Tracer can have an impact on the game even if she's not a really strong hero right now. For Striker, I best remember him showing pure domination on Temple of Anubis. With Munchkin, he excelled with Tracer anytime the Dynasty ran a triple DPS comp. Sinatra could be seen tearing teams apart on 2CP and during that stage 3 playoff game against the Shanghai Dragons on Havana. And how can we possibly forget about Erster 6k on Eichenwald? That's one of the greatest Tracer pop-offs we've ever seen in the history of this league. I think you can make a good argument for best Tracer in the league for any of these guys, but I personally am going with Stryker. After getting denied of my best Tracer in the league in 2018 thanks to Sabiobi, Stryker finally claims the title. The stats suggest that he is amongst the top as well since he's number 1 in final blows, number 2 in eliminations, and 7th in damage. He also charges pulse bombs the 6th fastest in the league, while also ranking top 5 in average amounts of deaths, and I mean like least amounts of deaths not the most. It's so rare to see Striker struggle on Tracer, which is why I decided to pick him as my number 1 Tracer in the league. And for the final DPS, we have Widowmaker. Widow was kind of a tricky one for me personally since there were some crazy good Widow players this year. Choosing between Happy, Diem, Saya Player, and Cory is like trying to pick a favorite child. In my opinion, they were easily the top 4 Widow duelists in the Overwatch League. Winning that Widow 1v1 is crucial, and these guys excel with that. Not to mention that they all had some very memorable plays that go beyond just killing the enemy Widow. These guys almost never miss their shots. They are the closest thing we have to human aimbots. We've seen some of these players trade blows with each other on Widow before too. It's truly something else to watch. We've seen Happy dominate Diem and vice versa, then Saya Player vs Cory happened in stage 4 and that proved to not be a disappointment either. I feel like it really depends on the day when it comes to picking the number 1 Widowmaker. Sometimes a player can really be failing it and it leads to him completely taking over a game. I guess I'll break it down by the guys who have gotten dominated by opposing Widows the least. From what I saw, Saya Player and Cory were the ones to keep pace or dominate the most. If memory serves right also, Saya Player and Cory have the two best Widow duel ratios of all time. Although Saya is a bit higher up, I decided to pick Cory as my best Widowmaker of 2019 due to how much he carried during stage 4. Plus, he is a bit better overall when you compare the stats this year. And that's a wrap on DPS. Time to finish this video off strong with the supports. Starting with Ana, there's 5 players who I have honorable mentions for. Those players are Kareev, Jonak, Violet, Ryu Jae Hong, and Shu. Once stage 3 hit, Ana was being utilized quite a bit more since running Zenyatta against Sombra was pretty risky, and I think Kareev in particular took full advantage of this. Once he had that coming out game against the Shanghai Dragons, he never looked back. Every single match from that point onward during stage 3 was pure domination. He was the sleep dart king. And while it wasn't until the end of stage 3, Violet eventually showed off a reliable Ana as well. But unfortunately, I don't think either of them played at a high enough level for long enough to be considered number 1 on this hero. The other three were consistently crushing the opposition in my opinion for a long time and were pretty bloodthirsty players with how much damage they were outputting, but as much as I liked their Ana play too, the only real option here for me is Twilight. I'm sure some people will disagree with me, but I don't think anyone was better than Twilight when it comes to cooldown efficiency on this hero. When somebody like Kari, for example, hit his peak this season, he was doing what Twilight did on a fairly regular basis. Now obviously, he wasn't hitting like 30 plus sleeps a game, but Twilight overall was still landing a lot of ridiculous sleeps throughout the entirety of the season. I think his uses of the Bionade was also second to none. 
With all of the superstars on a team like the Vancouver Titans, sometimes people can forget just how much of an impact Twilight has on games. Also, Twilight is even more bloodthirsty than the rest of the guys I talked about on this list as he ranks number 2 on the damage per 10 list, and he also ranks number 6 in healing, which is only behind Violet in terms of all the honorable mentions I had. Not for Baptiste. I'll keep this one short and sweet. It's Rascal. Very few players in this league could match what Rascal was doing on Baptiste. The healing and the damage are just absurd. Not to mention that he was charging up his amp matrix at an alarming rate. There were times where he'd be charging that thing up in like 40 seconds flat during the GOATS medal. Rascal is a disgusting Baptiste player. He's one of the first people we saw who could frag out using him. And we know that he can find success both in GOATS and in 222 as we did see him get subbed in on support one time during stage 4. In my opinion, Rascal paved the way for how to play BAP. He dominates on this hero in a way that very few players in the world can match. And just to further show how scary he is on this hero, let me read out some stats. Number 2 in eliminations, 1st in damage, 2nd in healing, 2nd in final blows, and 2nd in ultimates per 10 minutes. There is not a single player besides him who consistently ranks in the top 2 for all of these categories. God likes stuff from Rascal, he is just the only logical choice here. Okay. This is it. We are down to the final five heroes. Let's talk about Brigida. Not a lot of people like Brig, which is perfectly fine. I understand that. But sometimes that hate can blind us when it comes to judging how important she was in the GOATS meta. Having a top tier Brig player goes a long way, and the results speak for themselves. A majority of the teams who did well this season had a good Brig player. Look at Hoxel, Rascal, Erster, Libero, and Adora. I'd say most people consider them all to be in the upper half of the league on this hero. But when it comes down to selecting who is the best, it's definitely Hoxel. He was a dominating presence on Vancouver, while tank and support heavy compositions were relevant. He won Rookie of the Year for a reason, after all. Sure, his Genji and Mei were good, but the main reason he got so much praise was because of his elite break. All you have to do is watch him play. Playing the way Hoxel does is the way that any aspiring brick player should strive to be. It's as close to perfect as you can possibly get in my opinion. His dial is so perfectly balanced. He always knows when to be aggressive and when not to. His 3.7 deaths per 10 minutes is evidence of this. You'd think that his damage stats wouldn't be at the top since he plays this hero so smart, but he did in fact lead all break players in the league in terms of damage, eliminations, and final blows. And because of his good damage output, he tends to get the most out of Briggs' passive. That's probably a good reason why he ranks top 3 in healing. And when you combine the kill contribution with the healing, that would explain why he is also tied for number 1 with 5.5 rallies for every 10 minutes. Hoxel was a true monster on Brig. Next on the list is Lucio. As a Lucio player, it pleased me greatly to see him get so much playtime after we practically never saw him in Season 1 due to how powerful Mercy was at the time. And as it turns out, there's some pretty nasty Overwatch League level Lucio players out there. You've got Slime, Moth, Masa, Animo, Big Goose, the list goes on and on. Everybody has different tastes when it comes to Lucio, I feel. Some people think the best ones are the Reddit Lucios who get the kills, while others find that the best ones are the ones who have good sound barriers while keeping them and the rest of their team alive. I personally am someone who likes a balance of both, which is why my best Lucio player in 2019 is Moth. He might not make as many crazy plays as somebody like Masa or Slime, and he might die more than somebody like Animo, but Moth is still fairly good at everything, and that's where I think he gains the upper hand over some of the other players in the league. Someone like Slime and Masa excel with making aggressive plays, but their stats from the support side of things aren't as good. Then there's Animo, who is better with healing and staying alive, but not quite as good when it comes to making big boops all the time. Moth is well balanced with all of this, though. Other than healing, you won't see him rank number one in anything else, but at the same time, you won't find him towards the bottom with anything except for hero damage, but I feel that making smart plays with your boops and having good sound barriers are far more important than how much damage you do on Lucio, so that's really not a huge deal in my opinion. Moth is a very intelligent Lucio player who is not afraid to take initiative when the situation seems dire. Moth is the perfect choice for somebody like me. He does everything that I would want a Lucio player to do. Next up is Mercy. It's funny how she went from being a staple pick in Season 1 to a situational hero in Season 2. She was most commonly picked anytime a Bastion or Pharaoh was in play, and out of everybody who played Mercy, I liked Yveltal, Neptuno, Cruz, and Masa the most. Masa I liked for how little he died, Cruz was good for his death rate and how often he got Valkyrie, and Neptuno was good for the healing and pistol moment, but Yveltal takes the cake for me. I know some people will yell at me and say he had one of the higher death rates in the league on Mercy, but he more than makes up for it with his league high in healing if you ask me. He outheals every honorable mention on here by nearly 2,000 per 10 minutes. Also, I think the higher death rate shows just how much he was willing to put his life on the line to protect Jinmu in the sky. Yveltal is one of the more aggressive Mercy players in the league as well, so that might help explain that too. 
The man made a lot of plays on Mercy. It's worth noting that Yvelto has more playtime on Mercy than all of the honorable mentions combined, so it would make sense that his death rate is higher since there's so many more chances for him to get picked off during a game. I like Yvelto's Mercy though. He tried to do more than any other Mercy in the league did, I feel like. Now we do Moira. I know we all make fun of her for being a low skill hero that anyone can use, but we still have to pick a winner. So my top Moira for 2019 was Violet. He didn't start off too hot on this hero to start the regular season, but he slowly but surely improved over time, and by stage 4 he really started to hit his stride. Out of everyone, I thought Violet found the most value using Coalescence. The stats would suggest this as well, as he was top 3 in damage and number 1 in final blows. Violet played very well on Moira towards the end of the season. He had many solid performances where he clearly outplayed the competition. To give some honorable mentions before we move on though, I think that Twilight, Jonek, Ryu Jae Hong, Kareev, and Shu were also excellent Moira players of their own. And finally, to cap off this giant video, we have everyone's favorite Omnic Monk, Zenyatta. And if we're being honest, there's only three realistic options. It's either Jonek, Twilight, or Violet. These were the most dangerous Zen players in the league, no question. They were the top three with the eye test and on the stat sheet. On any given day, I think that you could say that one of these guys is better than the other two. That's how close they are with one another when it comes to their skills and overall presence on a game, and it really depends on what context matters to you the most too. If you're more of a person who looks at healing, then Violet's probably the person you want. But if you want someone who gets a lot of solo kills and opening picks to start a fight, then you'll want Jonek. And if you want the player with the highest damage number in the league, then Twilight's going to be your guy. All three of these guys I absolutely love. It's not an easy choice to make, but the person with the most impact on Zen, in my opinion, is Twilight. For a while, Violet had more damage per 10 minutes this season, but as time went on, Twilight slowly but surely took that away from him. Plus, him and Jonek tend to contribute more during team fights. Also, out of the three, I think Twilight is the smartest when it comes to using Trance. Although Violet may have more healing, there were many occasions this year where his use of this ability was poorly timed, and with Jonek, sometimes he would panic when his tanks got pressured too much and would end up popping Trance when he probably could have kept it for a different situation where it would have been more useful. With Twilight, though, I never really got those types of vibes. His uses of Trance were usually pretty clean, smart, and efficient. So for that, plus his league high damage stat with Zen, I will give him the title of best Zen Yada in the league. And there you go. That is my best player on every hero from season two of the Overwatch League. What did you guys think of my list? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section and feel free to tell me your best player for every hero while you're at it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, you should definitely hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and share this video with one of your Overwatch League loving friends. I dedicated a lot of time and research into making this, so it would mean a lot if you could do those things. Anyway though, thank you all so much for the love and support as usual, I really do appreciate it, and until next time, this is ATP, signing out. Peace.